Good morning. It's the 26th of November. Two days before Thanksgiving. And I've got my root cellar. I call it my fig cellar. Packed with figs and closed for the winter. Covered with a tarp, weighed down. It has a great capacity for figs, especially smaller figs that I dig up and place in there for the winter. There's a previous video that talks about the root cellar and shows the inside. I've got a couple more here that I'm going to wrap and there's a few that just didn't pass the standards I've placed over the years on good varieties. And so they're going to just be, <laughs> they're going to be deserted <laughs> for the winter, abandoned. And not this one. This is a great variety and I'm going to wrap it. Some I wrap, some I place in the root cellar. Some I place in the, I have an isolation room, which I'm going to make a video of for you. My fig isolation room that my son built for me in the basement. And it all depends. I don't store any in the greenhouse. I don't think that's a good idea. Here I've gotten my wood collection. <laughs> Or <laughs> my my wood for the for the season for uh, and I've got some more over there that I've got to rearrange from last season. But this is my wood supply for my wood stove. Now that winter's bearing down on us heavily, I'm going to quickly show. How I wrap my figs um, in the process of wrapping my figs the last couple days actually just a few hours <laughs> yesterday and I try to do it when the weather's permitting this is a finished wrap and I'll show you what what's inside with some of these others Hey, hi there. Happy Thanksgiving. I've got some materials out here. I never throw away an old sheet or an old blanket or quilt or any foam that I can get my hands on here and there. And I stuff them into these hefty bags. And they don't take a lot of space up. Really, they don't. We fold up the tarps. It's, it's well worth it to me because I do not want my figs to die. I don't want die back. I want to preserve my Breba that I anticipate with tremendous enthusiasm in early summer. The Breba, those figs that form on last year's wood well they're non-existent if you haven't preserved last year's wood and so here you can see i've wrapped this and they're delicious especially certain varieties i might add i i love my breba and there again we talk many times about the san pedro type the figs that only give you a breba crop the first crop on last year's wood and none well, all of the figs that do grow on the main crop, they, they all fall off because they need caprification from the fig walls. They're very valuable. Some people don't value them. I do value them tremendously because they give me lots of reba. So before the 4th of July, I'm eating delicious figs. Delicious figs. And not having to wait an extra month to get or another 
two or three weeks, depending on the varieties, to get main crop figs. And to me, more is better. And early, early, early. I don't think I've stressed it. <laughs> well, maybe I've stressed it too much. Here, you can see that there are lots of beautiful little buds that I'm going to protect. I think you can see them. It's early in the morning, it's kind of bright out. But there is no way that I'm going to let these die back. This, these, my precious fig trees. I love my fig trees. <laughs> and some people do let them die back. That is not a method that I employ, and it's not one that I encourage, and it's not one that I recommend. It's a little work. It's a little work to wrap the figs. But if you know how to do it, and I do, because I've been doing it all my adult life, all the way back to when I was a teenager and helping my grandfathers and my father and my uncles, then why not do it? It's a little bit of work, but isn't it a lot of work to take care of figs? To buy them, to, to, to give them fertilizer, to nourish them, to water them, to prune them, to care for them. To, you know, I mean, it, it's a tremendous amount of work to, to, to be a grower, a fig grower. And so we're adding a little more work at the end of the season, but look what you're preserving. You're preserving all that former work and making it worthwhile. You're preserving your Breba your first crop, and you're going to have a much, 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 much earlier main crop fig, much earlier, because it's on established wood. And that new growth that produces the main crop figs is going to be more vigorous, and it's going to be earlier, and it's going to be much more successful in terms of producing a main crop of figs because you preserved last year's wood. In this climate, in the Northeast, I live in New Jersey in 7A. To me, it's fundamentally imperative that you protect your figs and preserve some of last year's wood. And this is how I do it. Now I've tied this up, I pulled it together. It's no big deal. Figs are very, very flexible. And so with a little bit of effort, I'm able to pull these together. It's no big deal. And I've placed a 60 watt light in here, a utility light. A 60 watt light. I do every year and some say well it's not safe. Yes it's safe but I'm not encouraging you to do it. Not without knowledge. I have experience. This will be completely waterproof when I'm finished so no water will get to it. If any water did get to it the only thing that would happen is that the circuit breaker would trip and that would be that. That's why we have circuit breakers in, in modern homes and not fuses anymore. But even if it was a fuse, it would just burn the fuse. But I've never, ever, not one time, ever, in decades, I have never had a circuit breaker trip for any reason whatsoever. Never. Not once. Still, I'm not advocating for you to try this method, not without additional information. You may try it. You may make inquiries about it. But this is my method because... This little 60 watt bulb, when this is covered, when this fig is covered, when this tree is covered, this precious, beautiful, wonderful tree, <laughs> I will never stop elaborating on it. Never. Because I want to convince you that it's well worth it. This tree will be covered and it doesn't require a lot of heat. On those very, very cold nights when it gets down to, say, Two degrees, four degrees, five degrees, six, or maybe a couple days in a row, down to zero even possibly. And I've even had occasions out here in the country where I live where it's gone sub-zero a few times, one or two degrees below zero. All you need to do is flick on the switch. I have a switch inside the house which controls all of my lights. They're all connected together. I'll show you. I have a a outlet outdoor you can see that and it's waterproof and I plug it into my electric here I protect this where I can have more plugs I protect this under this this gets upside down 
and I put bricks on it and that waterproofs everything and then that is exposed the outdoor timer if I want it to be on timer I can flip the switch when it's very very cold I'll flip the switch on inside the house and leave it on and I'll let the timer turn the figs off during the day because you don't want to have heat during the day the sun the sun is more than enough and of course it warms up in the day it's more than enough to keep your figs alive and keep them from freezing it's those dip downs at night when no matter how much insulation you have over top of your figs it's still going to go down to whatever it is at nighttime if you have a strong wind and it's cold and it's going down to five degrees okay it might be a degree warmer inside of your figs if you have them wrapped that's not enough you're going to get dieback now you won't get dieback all the way down to some of these larger trunks if you're covering your figs you're going to preserve a lot of this maybe all of it too it depends on how mild the winter is but if it's a real real cold winter and you get a lot of cold days consecutively in a row at nighttime the temperature is going to dip inside even in your covered figs and you need to have some source of light it's always better to cover your figs even without the light so understand that you're going to have less dieback and sometimes no dieback some seasons no dieback but if you want to make sure like i do that when those real cold snaps come along and it dips down you know those polar vortexes you know i want to have a little bit of extra insurance that i can flip on that switch in the house or have this on a night timer so that when it really dips down and the sun goes down and, and temperatures really dip down this little 60 watt bulb is going to keep the temperature inside of this fig this wrapped fig it's going to keep it 15 degrees warmer 15 degrees at least and that makes a big difference if it goes down to zero and you've got 15 in there and all the heat down here is good and it rises and it comes up it gets caught up here in the top remember this is wrapped this is a wrapped fig it's got a tarp it's got maybe some burlap and may, maybe we'll have some insulation i might put a little bit of this foam here's here's a fig tree that um i mean you know what i think i'll get my knife out and just cut this and show you let me just see if i can do this another one of those times i wish i had an extra hand there we go let's see let's open this up that was it. see i put a little bit of foam over the top of this this is a precious variety this is rondi bordeaux and so i've placed a little bit of foam over the top of that and that foam is there for a number of reasons it's not just there to keep it warm when it's real cold it's there also to protect it against the heat yes to protect it against the heat a lot of people that wrap figs make the mistake of not realizing that the heat is a killer too especially on warm days like today like today it's going to be 60 now it won't hurt if it's just a short uh, warm-up spell but in the spring you can get one week or 10 days like in the end of february or certainly in march where the sun is just beating and now it's no longer a winter solstice sun it's a sun that is out for extended hours and that sun is just penetrate it's beating down on this cover and it's the heat is penetrating through the tarp and through whatever other wrappings you might have and it will heat up the inside to such a degree that your tree will come out of dormancy after a few days or a week and then it, you get another cold snap at night and it goes down to 20 degrees or 17 or something and it will kill it it'll kill it dead trust me i know that okay it's not a good idea to just have only a tarp because too much heat can come through and of course it's not warm enough at night to hold in the heat so you have to have a balance you've, you've got to you've got to accomplish a balance wrapping figs <clears throat> is a science everything is a science i've learned in my life everything things that seem simple turn out being complex there's no end to 
how deeply you can delve into almost any subject matter in this world. There's so much more to it. So you want to have protection against too much heat buildup. And I will wrap this, once I have the tarp, I will even put some burlap over the, the outside to keep the heat off of it, to keep the sun from beating down on it. Yes, even in the wintertime, I want that to stay cold. I want the inside of my wrappings to stay cold, not be warmed up by the sun. And so I'll put burlap around the outside. It's not a hard process. Look at, look at all this, look at the figs that will be here next year. Take a look at this. Who would want to sacrifice all of that? Look at that. Look, it's eight foot tall. Easier, maybe nine. And it's all figs. I'm not sacrificing that. Big deal. You take a rope, you pull it together, you put a little bit of uh, foam. You don't even have to. You don't have to put foam. You could just put some old sheets or a blanket. Here, here I have a an old tarp, and not a tarp, an old uh, quilt that my wife gave me years ago. I'll put this right around. I'll throw it over the top. I wish I could do it. I don't have. I wish I had someone filming this for you. But I'll take this this old quilt. Let's take a look at it. It's nice and thick. It's not too heavy. I'll th I'm going to throw that over the top of this. That's all. And then I'm going to put a large tarp, this big green tarp. I'm going to tie it together like this one. You can see how it looks when it's done. This one's all done. The light is in there. It's ready to go. There's another light for another fig, but that one, that one's in there already, ready to be plugged in. It's already wrapped internally. The only thing I will do, because if you feel this, it's hot. This is hot now from the sun beating on it. It's really hot, but it's got protection in there. And that's why I put it in there. But I'll still take a little burlap and just wrap it around the outside to keep the sun off of it, to shield it from the bright sun. And that will make a difference. It will keep it cold. Keeping it cold is important. Now in the spring, in the spring, a trick is to open this all up. Once you get into late March, open this all up. Don't let it get too warm inside. And at nighttime, you can just fold it over and wrap it a little bit more. So when it gets cold, it's gonna dip down below freezing. You protect your figs. And then in the daytime, you manipulate it a little bit so that it serves as almost a greenhouse effect. And your figs will bud so much earlier in the protection of the wrapping. You know, your, your, your fig trees will come to life earlier, just like if they were in a greenhouse. So you don't have to have a greenhouse, everyone. You don't have to. You just need to wrap your figs. And then you use the wrappings sort of, as I said, as a way to promote early growth and early budding. And then you're going to have an early crop, early 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 my, my figs are very much three weeks to a month earlier than many many people many growers and there's a reason i'm showing you the reasons and the the reasons are in my other videos as well all of the reasons and all of the the things and the techniques that i use are all in my videos if you look over my videos and if you put them together i'm not hey i'm not cecil b demille I'm just a home grower. I don't make the best videos. I use my phone. Nothing's rehearsed. I don't have a camera. I, I'm just me. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm just a, a backyard grower. But I've been doing it for a long time and I want to I want to give something back to my favorite hobby. Okay, and so this is my way of giving back to the fig community. What You know, what I've learned and what I've been able to accumulate in terms of knowledge over the years I want to share I want to share because I I want to I want to further the enthusiasm and there's tremendous enthusiasm being generated for fig for figs now for growing figs now which I'm very happy because many many years ago it, it was a lonely world to be a, a grower <laughs> it was just sort of like a family thing now it's an international phenomenon. It's wonderful. 
and I want to encourage more participation and that's why I make these videos I hope they're of value to you they they in totality they are they represent the sum total of, of my knowledge I mean there's more videos that need to be made there's so much more really and I'm going to make them my next video I'm going to show my isolation room but I'm trying to give some of the reasons why it's so important to wrap your figs don't abandon them to the winter don't let them die back that is not a good idea you want to preserve your breva you can see the breva here look at them you can see them look at them you want to you want to produce you want to preserve your your breva you want to preserve last year's wood you want to get that quick start on your main crop next year it makes all the difference in the world it's not hard to do it's easy to do once you get the feel of it it's just nothing to it there's nothing to this now there have been many many attempts many many years ago that failed there are things that just don't work and I know what they are I'm not showing you what doesn't work I'm showing you what does work okay I, I'm, I'm trying to give you the advantage of learning immediately from my previous mistakes and gaining immediately from my successes. These methods work, and the reasons why I've just explained. Preserve your trees. Wrap your trees. I have quite a few to wrap. Many of them I just dig out of the ground. I just dig them up and I put them in my isolation room where I put them in my fig cellar here I put some bricks in a hole where I've dug up a, a more delicate variety that I didn't trust I didn't want to trust it to the winter here's another I dug up <clears throat> and you know you can dig figs up you can cut away their roots dig out about a foot from from the trunk all the way around dig it up it doesn't matter if the dirt falls off of it you can put them in a little pot over the winter time put them in the the isolation room or put them in the fig cellar in the fig cellar they could be bare rooted you never have to water ever in the fig cellar because of the humidity the high humidity and it doesn't even have to have dirt around the roots it does not matter and people will say to me well digging them up digging, doesn't that hurt them cutting up no it doesn't hurt them in fact it helps that's right it does help it helps because in the same fashion as when you put a fig tree in a container and you bind its roots up and it produces more fruit than if it's growing freely in the ground. When you dig a tree up, a small tree, and you cut away its roots all but say a foot from, let's, let's look at this one. If, if you were to dig this one up from here back, okay, all the way around, you dig it up and you put it into storage, okay? What you're basically doing is you're cutting back on the excessive roots and the you're going to cut back on the excessive excessive growth in the spring and in the summer where it will maybe make a lot of branches with less fruit. By cutting away those roots, it's it's the same effect as putting it in a container where you're compressing the roots. You're 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 uh, confining the roots to a small area and you're producing certain stress. And as a result of this stress, the fig tree will respond in producing more fruit. We don't know why, really, but it does. <clears throat> and experienced growers know this. Putting a tree in a container will give you fruit earlier in terms of maybe in one year. Where sometimes if you put a tree in the ground, it might take several years. But if you cut the roots around, and I always do, even when in my ground, I, when they're small, I cut around, even if I don't extract it from the ground I cut the roots because it makes more figs so it doesn't hurt your tree to dig it up and put it in storage it does not it doesn't hurt it but these are just some techniques that I use I don't want to go on and on here I have a bag full of yeah this is just pine needles from my white pine trees and I place this around my trees 
to give them a little bit more protection. You know, it's just a little bit of a mulching effect to protect the trees. You know, I hear a lot about, oh, well, the trees will get mildew and then they're going to, I don't know what they're talking about. You know, I don't, when you're done right, you, you know, you leave the bottom of the tarps, you leave them open a little bit. I, I have little openings. I put bricks in there. I'll show that in another time. But I allow for airflow into my wrappings and I don't get uh, rot or mildew or, or any of these things that I hear people talking about. It just doesn't happen. And as far as creatures getting in there and eating away at the figs, just one time. I had some kind of a creature eat some of the bark around the bottom. I don't have that problem either. I don't know what people are doing when they're wrapping figs, but you don't want to do whatever causes that <laughs> because I'm saying that I don't have any trouble with any of that, okay? Um, there's not excess humidity inside of a tree that's wrapped. If you do it right, you can use lights if you want to, like this one. Uh, safely I do all the time have done it for years decades decades and so did my uncles and family um, there's a technique to everything and I could go into more detail at some other time in another video but I'm hoping I'm giving you some ideas here this can be done and it's not real difficult to do you don't need a lot of materials it's easy and anything you do to to cover your figs is better than leaving them to the mercy of our fierce cold winters anything you do even if you were to do something like here's an intermediate method I, I don't advocate it but if you were to cut this back just cut it and, and you lose a lot yeah you lose your breba but at least you have some last year's wood some heavy wood and you could cut these back and cover them it's easier to cover and it's closer to the ground and that's another method that you can use it's an intermediary method it's not an experienced method but you can do it and it's better than nothing here remember I said in a previous video I cut these back I cut these back to four foot tall four and a half five foot tall uh, the last year last fall this year I didn't and I stated in an earlier video that every third year I have to cut back. I have to cut back heavily. And you will too if you're successful in preserving your tree through the winters because they get too big. Now this is just a, a, a perfect size. This is going to produce so many figs next year. So many. And early too because I'll use my wrappings as a greenhouse. Okay. This is going to be, this will produce what 20 trees in a pot will, will produce 20 and i'm not making that i'm not exaggerating this will produce an abundance of, of fruit because i'm preserving it i'm guaranteeing that it's going to be preserved i'm going to make sure that these these branches these all these beautiful buds they're all going to be preserved but next year i'll cut it back somewhat and the following year i'll have to cut it back all the way again I'll have to cut it again. You have to. I'm getting older. And it's a lot of work when they get really, really big. I've had trees all the way up past the roof up there before. I've had very, very tall trees, 20-foot trees that I've wrapped every year with my uncle. And we helped each other do it. But now I don't do that anymore. I just keep them kind of small. And I cut them back every third year. And I grow a lot of small trees. And I move them around and I dig them up and, well, there's just so many methods that I use. Okay. So I hope this video has been of some value to you. I, I want to encourage you to try to protect your figs. Do protect them. Do try to protect them because nothing tastes better than a, than a fig grown in the ground. And why sacrifice all of your Breba? The Breba are just so valuable. They're so precious and they're early when we're dying for a fresh fig. All of a sudden your Brebas get ripe before, way before your main crop, usually. And so you have an earlier main crop too. And you have more figs and better figs. And, and your figs will get, get ripe 
when it's summertime in July and August instead of the end of September and October, which you never want your figs to, to get ripe in those, during those times. I mean, it, it's better than nothing, sure, but the quality of those figs are never going to compare, never, unless you're in a, they're in a greenhouse. And then they're still not going to compare because they're not in the ground. They are never going to compare to figs that get ripe on a tree in the ground in July and August and early September. No way. That's when you get the exquisite flavors, the wonderful, concentrated, delicious flavors of a homegrown organic fig. Nothing like it in the world. Okay, I think I'm wearing out the subject here. But thank you for visiting today. You can see my persimmons. I'm, I'm, I've been dehydrating persimmons nonstop, and I'm almost finished. I have a couple more. I've got a nine tray uh, dehydrator, and I've just got a few more to do, and I'll be done for the season. And I've got quite a few that I'm putting in the freezer. I dehydrate them and put them in the freezer so that I can have fresh fruit, organic fruit, to eat all winter long. Well, thank you for visiting. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you have a great one. Two more days. Good day.